by coming to, to Dublin, I guess this is a good opportunity for, for, for me to learn from the uh, Irish diplomacy. I had in the morning excellent discussions with Cleona and the colleagues in, in the department. And indeed, we have an excellent cooperation. Thank you again to, to yourself, Ambassador, and the Institute for offering this opportunity to join the uh, EU-Japan seminar here in Dublin. It's my second time when I'm joining such a seminar. I did it two years ago in Budapest during the Hungarian presidency, and it was also a very successful seminar in which we joined hands with excellent colleagues, officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, in Tokyo, and uh, okay. Japanese experts in discussing EU-Japan relations. Then I feel doing that here under the Irish presidency, indeed, it's a timely and very important exercise. It's a moment just uh, something like one month before the EU-Japan summit, which would be by the end of the, uh, by March, the end of March in Tokyo. Uh, the two presidents, uh, Van Rompuy and Barroso, are going to travel to Tokyo. And it will be a very important moment, which will mark uh, the implementation of the decision taken uh, in uh, May 2011, when the leaders uh, decided to launch the negotiations for a framework agreement and an economic partnership, or an FTA. Then uh, that would be my pleasure to, to get involved in that work, together with the colleagues in the Kaimusho, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, start implementing this uh, decision taken by the EU and uh, Japan leaders. I would say this is opening a new chapter uh, to a certain extent based on the excellent cooperation and friendship we had in the previous years, and something which is very much uh, expected and supported by the member states. Uh, at the same time, I would say that comes in the way in which we, the service uh, for the European External Action Service, we are trying to, to perform our role in being very instrumental in enhancing, developing, and stepping up the relations with strategic partners. As you know, Japan, it's one of the four, actually, if you want, it's out of the six strategic partners in Asia, because Russia, for example, joined ASEM on the Asian side. Yeah, US, well, it's a transatlantic, transpacific friend. Depends from where you see. From Japan, it's transpacific. From us, it's transatlantic strategic partner, plus, of course, all the others, China, ROK, and India. Then Japan, it's one of those who really uh, confirmed that we can explore together further areas in balancing, strengthening, expanding our strategic partnership and living up to the expectations on our side of the 27 member states, on the Japanese side of the Japanese friends from various uh, walks of life. But again, uh, I will say what is important for us now in, in discussing our bilateral relations is the fact that uh, we are trying uh, in this afternoon session in a very logical way to develop things which, uh, as I have seen partially, were already touched upon in the morning session in talking about trade and uh, development uh, cooperation. Uh, because this, of course, could be seen as two important strands of our cooperation, and uh, actually they open new wa ways in expanding EU-Japan engagement. I mentioned the, the uh, launch of the negotiations for the new agreements, which would create the platform for the member states to engage in deeper, expanded cooperation with Japan. One would be the political one. The framework agreement would be very much representing uh, a new chapter of bilateral relations, more balanced, not only focused on trade, but opening new areas which in the recent years were explored incipiently in crisis management, in energy, in political affairs, in security affairs, and being uh, actually an answer given by both EU and Japan to the new developments in the region. And I would say that very much we both are trying lately to apply our reflection in a new way uh, to the regional context. Uh, and I would uh, invite your attention just briefly sorry, to the way in which uh, we are trying now to answer to the uh, recent developments in general in Asia. Asia. Asia will remain for quite some time one of the part of the world with fastest growing economies and experiencing at the same time rapid political changes. 
Uh, we have good examples, like the case in, in Myanmar. We have still huge challenges in terms of uh, impact on the regional and international security, as it has happened recently with the missile and nuclear tests in DPRK. We have the rising global significance and influence of the region. Asian countries, in many ways, full of energy, full of dynamism, uh, contributing to many new initiatives at a global scale, are producing still impressive statistics in many ways in the growth, trade, investments, science and technology, and they engage with Asia, with intra-regional partners, but also in a more open way with us, the EU member states, and with the EU itself. Of course, many will speak about China's phenomenal growth over the last 20 years, or even three decades of uh, continuous growth as an obvious example. But I would say to the same extent, as I have mentioned, the way in which we are trying to expand our cooperation with the six strategic partners in the region, that uh, China is not the only big uh, protagonist of these developments, but also some others. And I would mention, for example, the way in which EU supports ASEAN as a group of nations, the 10 nations in Southeast uh, Asia, who represent uh, a good attempt of uh, following the example of the regional integration, which was successful here in, in Europe. And we are trying to share our experience to the extent to which the Southeast Asian nations will feel that this is appropriate and useful for them. And we are trying to support their role, uh, quite a central one, in shaping up the new regional architecture. Because we believe this is an answer, the regional integration, a new unfolding multilateral uh, security uh, architecture, an answer to many challenges which recently are being more visible and exerting certain pressure on the countries in the region. At the same time, I would say that uh, it's in our interest as uh, Europeans and as one of the, the biggest uh, world market and trading bloc, to be more active also on the trade side, to explore more, more ways to engage Asia. We are witnessing lately a good number of competing trade arrangements, and our Japanese friends can tell us about their understanding of the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, and the ongoing negotiations and expansion of the interest in supporting this initiative. They also can tell us uh, how they see the regional developments down in the southeast, the initiative of the ASEAN in trying to arrange a regional comprehensive economic uh, trade uh, arrangement, but also about many others which would cover also not only East Asia, but also the Pacific Rim. And of course, from this point of view, uh, we have our own strategies which are trying to answer, to connect with the partners in the, in the region, and offer themselves alternatives compatible with their own interests. Again, as I have mentioned, there are a number of flashpoints, challenges in the security landscape, and I'll have to mention also the recent uh, rising tensions across the seas because of certain uh, maritime disputes and territorial disputes. And uh, I will recall in that respect that while we do not take sides, since we, in, if you want, in inverted commas, we are sort of neutral power in the region, a soft power, and not having hardware and security assets displayed in the region, we still have uh, substantial visible, engaged, strategic interests of contributing to the peace, security, and stability from North East Asia to Southeast Asia. And we have an interest in contributing to the handling, the settlement, and uh, to the development of mechanisms who can address the issues and disputes in the region in a way which is compatible with our core values and the peace and stability interests in the region. I mentioned how much for uh, certain countries, especially for ASEAN, our experience in regional integration may represent 
an example to follow, may represent an experience in keeping peace and stability. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> it was a good uh, reminder uh, to see how Mr. Yamamoto, in, in his presentation in the morning, uh, referring to, to the brochure presenting the uh, Lisbon Treaties experience, has mentioned the experience of the continent, European continent, where uh, EEC and the European Union, of course, uh, achieved a historical victory in keeping peace and stability, given this unification integration efforts. It's a project which may have a value for the uh, friends and partners in Asia, from Northeast Asia down to Southeast Asia. Uh, we really believe that the way in which uh, in, in Europe uh, the settlement of certain disputes from borders, territorial disputes, to uh, shared management of natural resources has been done in the past and still going on in a way which would respect the interests of neighboring countries. It's something which may provide good experience for uh, our Asian partners and friends. Then, in many ways, I would say, uh, increasingly now, in these years, it's becoming clear that Asia matters to Europe for many reasons. But also, Europe matters to Asia as a continent with rich historical experience in handling uh, difficult issues. And again, because Asia's future growth, <coughs> dynamism, prosperity, access to uh, good markets like ours may still nurture stronger, deeper links with the uh, EU. In spite of the uh, relatively slow uh, economic recovery of the EU, we still remain the largest global economy, the largest donor, as it was uh, mentioned in the morning when uh, a good number of uh, distinguished panelists here spoke about development assistance. And in many ways also, I would say, a point of reference for positive, substantial experience in regional integration and settlement of many uh, important issues linked to the uh, regional interests. I would uh, more focused refer now to the relations with uh, Japan. We always felt that uh, Japan was a natural partner for the EU, uh, both being democracies, sharing common values and interests, largely being, largely being uh, civilian powers, but increasingly willing to deploy military assets abroad for peace and stability and making efforts in contributing in many parts of the world to the peace building and the management of crisis. We both believe in rules-based, effective multilateralism to respond to many global challenges, including climate change, sustainable development. And I would say, in many respects, our combined global economic weight and international standing do add value, making a difference in many respects. But maybe just because uh, of this very comfortable background, sometimes our close positions, similar interests, did not reflect immediately in very substantial, engaged, uh, concrete joint actions. And there is a good deal of untapped potential in this relationship. I just recalled a few minutes ago the decisions made by the Prime Minister uh, Khan and uh, the two presidents of the European Council and Commission how to effectively respond to the expectations and making good use of the potential of the relationship. And the decision made at the end of May 2011 to launch uh, these two comprehensive, important uh, agreements, the Framework Agreement and the Free Trade Agreement, represented not only an intention of balancing and expanding the relations, but also to inject substance into the strategic partnership. And we are now in the eve of this summit, which is going to mark the launch of these negotiations. It's going to be one 
which by launching the negotiations of these two comprehensive agreements, it's going to shape up a new architecture of our relationship. It's going to send a strong signal in the region. I can uh, briefly mention that uh, we are now also uh, negotiating an FDA with India, which may be finalized uh, in the middle of this year. We are uh, also, as you have seen, announcing the launch of such negotiations with the United States. Uh, with China, we are going to launch the negotiations on an investment uh, agreement. With ROK, we already finalized the FDA in 2010. We have good progressing uh, negotiations with a number of Southeast Asian partners. Actually, the FDA with Singapore was already finalized. We are progressing with Vietnam, with Indonesia. But I would say the way in which we'll have this articulated framework two major agreements on the political side and more than political, I would say, uh, encompassing a good number of major areas of new cooperation with Japan. And the FDA agreement with a major economic player in the world, Japan, it's showing how much there is a, a political will to engage in consolidating and giving a good status to this strategic partnership with Japan in the whole context of our strategic partnerships in Asia. Both uh, we uh, in the EU and Japan have a strong interest in building this architecture, in answering to our own challenges and problems at home. As I have mentioned, we are very grateful to the way in which uh, Japan is contributing to those financial monetary mechanisms who are supporting the efforts in addressing the challenges in the euro area. Again, we hope that through these agreements, also the new economic policies in, in, in Japan would be able, in the short and uh, midterm, will be able to reach their own targets, stabilizing the economic relaunch of the economic growth. Uh, we are following that very closely. I've seen a good number of uh, members of the European Parliament visiting this spring in February and having extensive discussions and contacts with the distinguished members of the Diet in the lower and upper house, yeah, in the House of Councillors and uh, in the Diet. Again, good discussions with uh, the people in various financial institutions in Japan. It's important for us to understand uh, the new uh, abenomics, the new policies, it's important for us to understand also those principles which were mentioned in recent speeches by the Japanese leaders about the way in which they would like to be more active, to engage more substantially, extensively with the countries down in the Southeast Asia, to see how Japan can play a stable, active, important role uh, in general in the region. In conclusion, I do not think that Europe's integration process and our ability to put aside historical differences between nations, build and defend common values, it's necessarily a model which mechanically or most automatically can be copied and transferred to Asia. But I'm convinced that uh, it can be a useful source of inspiration for our Asian partners. And I really believe that EU-Japan relationship can also help in this respect can be a driver, an influence multiplier for the EU and for our friendship and strategic partnership in <coughs> creating more peace, stability, and prosperity in Asia and in Europe. Again, we feel that our cooperation may help in supporting other countries in the region, China and India, the emerging powers, ASEAN in its attempt to build a strong regional community and play a certain role in building up new regional architecture. In all these respects, the EU-Japan cooperation can make a difference. We can show leadership together, present real opportunities and examples for all the others about how to cooperate 
it's not only about bilateral, it's about the impact of our bilateral relationship in multilateral, regional, and international structures. And again, I guess this is an example to show how, in spite of uh, internal domestic challenges we uh, both face, by joining hands and expanding and consolidated cooperation, we can bring solutions for the problems at home and, again, contribute to the answers and proper strategies for development and stability in our respective regions. Once again, as I have said, uh, I look forward to work with uh, my good colleagues, uh, the Japanese diplomats in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and my colleagues from the uh, Commission services. To the same extent, uh, looking forward to work with the colleagues from various Japanese ministries on the FTA negotiations and the framework agreement negotiations, because we really believe that by having these agreements, we would create a new platform, new chances for consolidating uh, an important strategic partnership for Asia and Europe and answering to the challenges of this century. Thank you.